Hello and welcome to Homemaking with Joy. I'm Rachel and today we're taking a break from our normal cooking and homemaking content to share this little guy's birth story. If you watch my channel, you will have seen me working hard in the garden and preserving this summer to making freezer meals as preparation for postpartum. And now he is finally here. He's nine days old and just a lovely little baby. And because so many of you were invested in my pregnancy and how I was doing, I wanted to share his birth story. A little context. I gave birth to my first two sons in the hospital, but this little guy was born at home. And so this experience was completely different from my hospital births. And I, I'm really excited about it. And I wanna share all of the wonderful things that I experienced about home birth. So how did I come to choose a home birth? I would say my first two experiences at the hospital were average. I had some interventions, I had some things happen that I didn't really want to happen. I wasn't very well educated on labor and delivery. I just assumed the doctors and nurses would tell me what to do and they would do what was best. And in their minds, they did do what was best. They did what they were taught, but I wanted a different experience. I considered a home birth with my second child, but I wasn't confident enough to make that decision to go for it. And so the whole time I was in the hospital with baby number two, I was comparing to what it would be like at home. And that really sealed the deal for me that I knew with baby number three, I wanted to have him or her at home. And that's what happened this time around. And it was awesome. It went so well and I'm so, so grateful. So, oh, hi buddy. I will explain some of the positive aspects as I go through his story. I have a timeline written down here. So I'm going to go through that of what my labor and delivery were like and the highlights along the way. I worked with a home birth midwife throughout my entire pregnancy. It was awesome. She came to my house for appointments. I just sat on my couch and she took my blood work. You know, I got to hear his heartbeat through the Doppler just laying on my couch. She got to meet my kids. She got to know her way around my house. So when labor and delivery time came, she could just hop to it and make herself at home because she knew where everything was. I was really happy with that very personalized care that she knew me, she knew my kids, I got to know her and I was, I was really happy with that experience. Unlike when you go to the OB and they ask you the same five questions and then you're on your way and you have to drive there and you have to find childcare for your other kids and you have to wait in the waiting room for 20 minutes. Like this was just so streamlined and so personalized that I, I really liked how that worked out. So let's fast forward to my due date and my 40 week appointment. Small caveat. So I had two ultrasounds done through my pregnancy, one at like eight-ish weeks, and then the anatomy scan at 20 weeks. Well, according to both of those scans, my due date was around October 15th. But according to my last period, which is how they generally calculate your due date, that due date was October 23rd. So my midwife decided to go with October 23rd as my official due date because if the baby came before then, awesome. But if baby came around then, then I, it wouldn't be such a, a mental game of waiting and waiting and waiting at the end, which I ended up doing anyway. Um, but so it's October 23rd and she comes for my 40 week appointment. And I'm still very pregnant and still very uncomfortable. We decide to do a membrane sweep and I really hope that puts me into labor that day on Monday. Didn't work. I wake up the next day and I feel very frustrated, but remind myself that God's timing is best. God knows best and this baby will come out eventually. But I was getting to the point of thinking that this baby will never come out. He will never come out because I had been waiting for so long just in case the 15th was my due date, you know, and babies can come early. So basically all of October, I was feeling prepared for a baby to come at any moment. And that is just exhausting, exhausting. I'm trying to keep on top of the dishes and the laundry and the house so that at any point we could drop everything and I could have a baby. 
it's it's a lot on a mom when you're already feeling gigantic and just want it to be over so then Tuesday rolls around Tuesday is a normal day I don't go into labor so it's about 5 30 and the kids are playing outside there are some neighborhood kids playing too I'm chatting with my neighbors there were like four or five different neighbors that drive by and say hey you're still pregnant which by the way if you see a very pregnant woman that is not a helpful comment she knows she's very pregnant I assure you so chatting with all the neighbors I have a couple contractions at like starting at six o'clock, but I've been having Braxton Hicks for weeks and weeks. So I just assume it's more Braxton Hicks. Move on with my day. We're having dinner. It's what? 630. We're having dinner. And I notice the contractions are happening when I'm sitting down, when I'm walking around. And that's one of the things that clued me in that this could be a real contraction, real labor contraction, because it didn't disappear as I drank some water or moved around. They were, they were definitely coming. So 7.30, we start timing contractions, and they're quite sporadic. They like two minute interval, four minute, eight minute, six minute, like all over the place. But I text my midwife, I let her know that we're timing contractions, um, and she, you know, she says they're sporadic, yes, but if they get more intense, even with being sporadic, let her know. So around 10 o'clock, I would say the contractions got more intense. I was texting with my midwife the whole time, giving her updates on the contraction times, which were still across the board. They were all over the place. Um, but I told her, all right, things are getting a little more intense. Um, my husband made a comment that like, I feel like there should be professionals here. And I relayed that to my midwife. She said, dads often have a better radar for what's going on than the laboring mom. So that told her, I'm, I'm gonna come. You know, you have a history of fast births. I'm just gonna come. Cause she lives pretty close by, but by the time she got packed up, it would be about 25 minutes until she got here. Um, my first baby was eight hours start to finish. Second baby was six hours start to finish. And so she was prepared for me to have a, a pretty fast labor. She decides to come over. She tells me at 1021 that I'm coming. Thankfully I have text messages, so I have timestamps for all of this. Well, she's about halfway here, and I text her again. I'm really glad you're coming. That was 1046. Things are getting a lot more intense. I'm glad you're coming. Yes, you need to be here. <laughs> and she had to call another midwife. There are always two midwives here when I'm delivering, and the other midwife lives about 45 minutes away. So it was also at that point that my midwife called the second and said, hey, start your trip. It's happening. So 10.50, my midwife arrives. I'm laboring in the kitchen. She comes in the front door. I'm in between contractions so I can smile and greet her. She says I can do a cervical check and see how far along you are, or I can start to set up the birth tub. She said it would take about 40 minutes to set it up. I said, you should do that. Please set up the tub. <laughs> she told me later, she looked, came inside and said, she could be five centimeters or she could be eight centimeters. This could go really quickly. And it did. So she and my husband are setting up the tub. I'm still laboring in the kitchen. And so they're running around doing hoses, blowing things up, whatever. And then I realize I should probably go to the bathroom before this continues because I hadn't gone for a while. So I make my way to the bathroom. I sit down and I have three contractions back to back to back. And I say, no, 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 no. I am not ready for transition. No, here it comes. But like I'm st stuck on the toilet. So I grab my husband and then when there's a, like less intensity or a little bit of a break, I have him bring me out to the living room. I had a medicine ball or like a exercise ball set up out here. And so I was able to be on my knees with my head and my arms up on the ball that was comfortable at the time and like rock back and forth and make my way through the contractions. Because, yeah, in transition, they were just coming one after another after another. I just kept thinking to myself, if I could just have a tiny little break, if I could just catch my breath, I would be able to do this. But obviously you do it because you have no other option. But man, when they just come back to back, it is rough. So my midwife was watching me and asking if I had the urge to push, things like that. This is my first unmed unmedicated birth too. My first two, I had epidurals. So I didn't experience all of this with my first two. And so like, I think 
I need to push soon. I think things are happening. I'm starting to shake semi-violently as like the hormones just surge through me. And then I feel like, oh, oh, he's descending. Like, I think that was an urge to push. And then I hear in the background, my midwife tells my husband, the birth tub is not going to be ready. We ran out of hot water and there's not enough water in the tub to actually give birth there. So she walks over to me and says, Rachel, where do you want to give birth? And I say, I don't know because I'm just having contractions and just trying to make it through to the next one. So she and my husband realize there's no moving me at this point. And so she grabs the big plastic shower curtain that we had prepared. She grabs the under pads and I'm able to scoop myself sort of onto that. She said she was impressed. I was able to even lift my legs while I was, you know, going through labor. It was crazy. Um, probably 30 seconds after she got that under me, my water broke. Um, this was at 1130. I felt something happen and asked her, was that my water? She said, yes. Well, then more shaking, more urge to push. She checked, you're dilated, push when you're ready. Push when you feel like you need the baby to come out. And so when my body had the urge to push, I pushed with it. It was amazing how it was, it was doing it all by itself, but like I helped it along. Um, again, I didn't feel that with my first babies, first two babies. And so I start pushing and the ring of fire, I've heard moms talk about the ring of fire. It is, it is literally fire. <laughs> it hurts so much. Um, so at that point, I'm just squeezing the daylight out of my husband's hand and screaming at the top of my lungs. I had my face in the medicine ball, so they said it wasn't very loud, but I was screaming. And so I hear my midwife coaching me like, breathe through it, breathe through it. So my husband's repeating the same thing because she didn't want me to push so quickly that I would tear. Backstory, first baby, I had an episiotomy. I do not wish that on anyone. Second baby, I tore along the episiotomy and so my midwife really didn't want me to tear this time. So she's trying to have me slow down, but I completely ignore her. I heard her, I understood her, and I chose not to listen because I just needed that baby out. I needed it to be over, I needed the baby out. So I hear her say, I think he's crowning. And part of me is like, are you kidding? He's not already out yet? This hurts so much, get him out. So I just keep pushing and pushing and pushing until all of, us, all of a sudden I hear, grab your baby. And so she caught him coming out, but then I was, oops, sorry, buddy. I was able to scoop him up from the front and grab him. And my husband took a video of this and I'm just panting. And I have this completely incredulous look across my face. Like what just happened? I just did that. This full blown human just came out of me. It is crazy. It's wild. The whole thing happened so quickly. And I like, I was still processing it for days afterward because it was just an experience that like, I was just along for the ride and my body knew what to do. And I just listened to the cues and my midwife coached me through it. But she joked that she had a very easy day at work because she basically just had to catch the baby. Um, like she set up the birth tub and, you know, didn't have to do anything with it. And she was here for less than an hour. Um, yeah, before he was born. So what did I say? We did the shower curtain and my water broke around 1130 and he was born at 1135, five minutes. So while the ring of fire was horrible, the whole thing was less than five minutes. And the benefits that have come from having him at home have far outweighed those very difficult five minutes. So he's born, I grab onto him. Then I'm able to sit down like against my husband on the floor. We wait about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, the cord stops pulsing, it goes white. I'm able to birth the placenta, that goes really smoothly. My midwife actually showed it to me, which I thought was very interesting. Um, she always thinks it's interesting because it's just a normal day at work. My husband was not so interested. <laughs> um, but we got to see that um, he got to cut the cord and then the ladies helped me up and I walked back to my bed. It was crazy. So I had epidurals with my first two. So you're 
legs are numb and you have to be in a wheelchair and it's really difficult to move around. And so I was sitting on the floor and they just helped me stand up and I just walked back to my room and they're like, wasn't even that hard. I couldn't believe it. They got me set up in bed. My midwives cleaned up everything. Like you cannot tell that I gave birth. I'm in my living room now. So like right there is where I gave birth and it's just mind blowing. Cleaned everything up. They made me a cup of tea postpartum with some herbs and um, a tincture to help with afterbirth pains and to prevent bleeding. They got me a snack because obviously I'd burned many, many calories just going through the hardest workout of my life. They helped me to the bathroom. They talked me through some postpartum stuff. All of his newborn checks were done at the end of our bed. So I got to lay in bed and watch as they weighed him and they checked him over and filled things out for paperwork. So he was born the day after his due date. However, when he came out for the paperwork they fill out, they have to say how many weeks gestation he was when he was born. And that's not based on due date, she was explaining to me, but it's based on how he presents after he's come out. So both of the midwives were confident he was between 41 and 42 weeks when he was born. Like one of the things, like the classic newborn scrunch where they pulled like froggy legs up he did not do that. He was perfectly content to stretch out, which does not surprise me considering the rolling and the stretching that I experienced and the end of my pregnancy. He was, he was stuffed in there and I was, I was stuffed in there. He was eight pounds and three ounces, which is actually my smallest baby. Um, so I'm grateful that my smallest baby was the unmedicated baby. <laughs> Although when you're in the moment, it really doesn't matter how much they weigh. You just have to do it. I mean, you just do it. You don't have another option, especially at home. Like I didn't have an option for pain medication or anything else. Like you just, you just do it, which makes me feel pretty awesome. If I can do that, I can do anything. <laughs> the midwives got me settled and they left around 2 a.m. And so it was pretty cool. I had a fairly normal dinner had a baby before midnight, and then I was asleep by like 3 a.m. ish um, and slept. And one of the things that has stuck out most to me about the home birth versus the hospital birth experience is having baby at home just seems like less of a big deal. Obviously, it is a big deal. Having a baby is a huge deal, but everything just went smoothly and it all seemed very normal and I woke up the next morning in my bed and I got to sleep without anyone poking and prodding me and I just got to snuggle my baby in my bed. It was super helpful. My mom came the next morning at like 7 a.m. when my big boys wake up and she took them um, for the day so that we could you know catch up on more sleep and rest and snuggle with him and do all of those things but yeah, it just was less of a big deal. And I don't know if that's partially because it's my third child as well. There have been a couple of things that seem very easy because he is my third baby. Like I'm not timing how often I feed him and change his diapers. And um, there was one issue with his latch with nursing. His tongue was clicking and I know that's not supposed to happen. So quick little Google search. Yes, that means his suction, he's not latching on correctly. So I'm able to adjust something and we fix it in like one minute. I wouldn't have known all of that with my first baby, but I know all that now. And so it was not overwhelming. I just fixed it and it was fine. And I just generally know how often he needs fed. I've learned about hunger cues at this point and taking care of a newborn. And, and so all of that seems very relaxed to me. My recovery has been excellent. I don't know. I mean, giving birth basically on all fours was very conducive to not tearing. I was on my back with the other two, with the epidurals in the hospital. Um, not having any pain medication going through me, you know, just being able to walk back to my bed. I was able to walk pretty normally. Um, I'm nine days postpartum and my bleeding has basically stopped. Um, I've been able to be up and moving around, doing a lot of the things that I normally do. Um, I had afterbirth pains. Those get worth, worse with each child as your uterus goes back to the way it was. But those are necessary. That happens. 
um, you know, nursing, you got to get used to that again. But thankfully, I have a great milk supply. All of that's going very smoothly. We weighed him at one week postpartum and he had gained 10 ounces, which is just awesome. Growing beautifully. What else? I don't know. Just, ooh, sorry, just super grateful that everything is going smoothly because there, I know there are so many moms that that is not the case that they don't have a smooth transition or recovery. And I just, there are too many factors to name which one could be the most contributing factor toward my easy recovery. But I was healthy during my whole pregnancy, the labor went smoothly and postpartum is going smoothly. I'm just so, so grateful. I like to think I took good care of myself the whole way and we're reaping some of the benefits and doing things naturally or unmedicated or however you want to say that worked out really well in my favor and um, so thankful for this healthy little guy my big boys are handling it okay you know there's some jealousy involved but they really love him they ask to hold him all the time they think he's the sweetest he cries and one of them will come tell me mommy he's crying I'm like thank you I hear that <laughs> but we're happy he's here. I'm so happy to finally have him out of me and to snuggle him and to be able to share him with everybody because he's really, really wonderful. And motherhood is really, really hard, but it's also so beautiful. I told someone the other day, motherhood and pregnancy and labor and postpartum are not glamorous, but they are beautiful. Not glamorous, but beautiful. You know, as I wear adult diapers postpartum, not glamorous, but I just birthed a human, and that is beautiful. And that is one of my main takeaways. Thank you, Lord, for this baby, for this family, and thank you all for being invested and encouraging me and watching to the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you'd like more information on like a hospital versus a home birth, I'd be happy to share about that and my experience. And, uh, that's all I have for you. It's time to get this little guy in bed. He's, <laughs> you can't hear it, but he's snoring the whole time. Anyway, thanks again for being here and I'll see you in the next one.